He thought again of Hashek, but it was not in Nevera. There he had failed. He had been a fool to drink Kuzi in the maze. A fool to trust Hasek. A fool to lower his guard. The pain of his body and the passing of blood he had already embraced. Even the humiliation. He had seen other boys in Shiraj mounted and could embrace the feeling. What he could not embrace was the fact that even now Hasek strutted among the Dal Sharam thinking he had won. That Jardir was broken. Jardir scowled. Perhaps I am broken, he conceded silently. But broken bones heal stronger. And I will have my day in the sun. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike here, and today we are talking about book two of The Demon Cycle, The Desert Spear by Peter V. Brett. Uh, I have all kinds of opinions about this book, and they are mostly based off of other people's opinions about this book. Uh, if, you have, if you watched my video for uh, The Warded Man or The Painted Man, whichever version you got, uh, which is book one in this series, uh, I'll put that up here for you two to watch if you didn't. I said that I thought that was one of the most, is this a word, the most page turnery books I've ever read because I read that book in two days. Uh, it didn't do anything completely crazy or friendly. Like, like what I said, Black Prism by, by um, Brent Weeks was my favorite book one to a fantasy series that I had read in years. Uh, that was because it was so unique and different. This one, I wouldn't say it was so unique and different as much as it was just entertaining. I had a great time with it, and it had so many different kinds of stakes, like things. Uh, you got demons that come out from underneath the ground, right? And so it made something as simple as traveling between towns feel like it had stakes. It was really important because traveling in fantasy novels always seems to either be redundant, boring, or pointless. With this, it felt like it had a point. I mean... Uh, at this point, guys, if you haven't read book one, I'd probably turn back now because I'll probably uh, I'll do my non-spoiler thoughts right now about uh, Desert Spear, but I might actually throw a, a spoiler or two from The Warded Man while I'm talking about it in the non-spoiler part. So if you haven't read any of these yet, I'd probably turn back now. Uh, so please don't get angry at me in the comments if you haven't read them yet. Um, something as simple as traveling is a big deal, as we saw in The Warded Man, when they were uh, going between the uh, the Bales farm all the way to uh, uh, the Tanner farm, and it ended up getting Arlen's mother. I can't think of her name. Arlen's mother killed. Okay, so I mean, you have such important things that can happen when it's something as simple as traveling, because you know they don't, they don't have a GPS. You know they're, they're, they can get lost, and when you get lost and it gets dark out, you're screwed. You're screwed if you don't have one of these little traveling bubbles that they use that, that, that can actually uh, create wards and, and hold off these demons. So what I'm going to say about this book is that as much as I love the first one, I was surprised to hear everyone tell me, oh yeah, it's all downhill from there. I'm like, oh, well, a lot of people feel that way. Like someone puts out like a rock album and it's really great and everyone will always say, oh, the first album is the best one. So I thought maybe it was a little bit of that. I'm not really sure. Then I went to Goodreads and read some of the uh, non-spoiler reviews, and almost unanimously, everybody's like, oh, yeah, this book is such a disappointment. The first book was so good. I don't know what he was thinking with this book. Just taking the chances that he took, it just made no sense. And I was just kind of bummed out because I was like, man, I love this world that he created. I love these three characters that he that he led the books with. What is the deal? Why, why does everybody hate this so much? And so I went into it not knowing what to expect. But I'm thinking maybe I had my bar set like a little low, and maybe that helped. Maybe that helped. I'm not sure, because I'm just going to say it off, right off the front here. I fucking love this. I had a blast with this book. I've said in previous reviews that I am a sucker for a coming-of-age story, and I am a sucker for gray characters. And the first book sets up Amon Jardir to look like he's just this big, typical bad guy, right? Oh, they look like they're, they, they sound... He describes them, got to find the proper words for it, he describes them basically as like extremist Muslims. Okay, so you're thinking, oh, okay, Muslims bad, right? No, he gives the first 200 pages of this book 
giving us Jardier's backstory, much like he did in the first book with Rozier, Leisha, and Arlen, where he did all the way from when the time when they were children all the way to current time. He does that right off the bat. Talk about balls on Peter V. Brett to take a book where you have three established main characters that everybody seemed to really like, and you don't see them for the first 200 pages because we're going to tell you what Jardier's deal is. A lot of people hated that. Me? I loved it. I loved it. I felt like it was if I got a backstory on the Fremen in Dune. That's what it felt like to me. I loved it. And I felt like it took what I presume was going to be the villain of the story and it made him relatable to a point to where I was like, okay, now we're just like First Law. We've got Who's the good guys and who's the bad guys? Eh, there are really no good guys. You know, there's just uh, less bad guys. Uh, so I was quite a fan of that. I, I, I know that a lot of people don't have the kind of patience needed. They don't like, okay, I just invested all this time on these three characters in the first book. And now I've got to uh, sit through 200 pages about a character that, I, you know, is basically like a passing reference in that first book. Uh, I can see why that was a tough sell for some people. Me, I'm going into this. I've got all five books to read. I don't have to wait. I'm okay with a little world building, and he does, he builds Krasian culture up so well by doing this, so I was fine with it. Uh, I said when I did, when I read um, Finders Keepers by Stephen King, which was the middle book of the Bill Hodges trilogy, and I couldn't believe, I said, only someone with the clout that Stephen King has can you spend 200 pages without your main characters from book one in it. I feel the same way about this one. I was like, dude, this is, this is his second book. And he's doing this. So, yeah, it was a hell of a risk by him. But for me, it paid off. For me, it paid off. And that's about as, as non-spoilery as I can get to it. And you felt like that was spoiler. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I'm not very good at not spoiling things when it's uh, talking about the book for a video and no notes or no teleprompter or anything like that. I tend to, to ramble like I'm doing right now. Yeah. Uh, so the book it, it like the first one where it goes through so many years this one really does after you get past Jardier's back backstory then you get into real time i say it's probably a matter of months after that uh you get the the return of Rena Tanner uh so i that was not just a throwaway character that i thought it was in the first book you get to see her come back you get to see uh Arlen's dad Jeff comes back you get to see a, a new type of demon uh you get to see Roger becoming more than just a silly musician. Uh, you get to see Leisha being a leader. Uh, it's it's all these characters grow, even though that this takes only a minimal amount of time that the first book took, just a fraction of the time. And yes, you do get more Arlen, and you get more development on why he's the way he is and why he is not accepting uh, of this uh, as the deliverer tag that, that people are throwing on him. And now you've got the question marks. Wait a second. Maybe Jardier actually is the deliverer. You never know, because you know they kind of tease that in the first book that he thought that, you know. But you know, it seemed like in kind of a, a usurper way that he that he was taking that tag. But after you read this, you're like, hmm, hmm. So uh, it, it's really, it's got a lot of mystery still left up in the air after you know the the way that the first book presumed made you presume that things were going to happen. This one. Uh, it, you don't quite go as far in the because, like I said, you went through decades in the last book. But in this one, uh, it really is a little more grounded. Uh, it builds the world really well, but it, it doesn't really—you don't really traverse as far as you did in the first one. And I'm gonna get into spoilers now. So uh, if you feel like I've already spoiled stuff for you, like I said, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying, guys. I'm kind of doing this as I go here. Uh, <laughs> I think that they, there's nothing that I said that's going to spoil the story for you, really, Just it, it, unless it's just prepared you that the first 200 pages of the book are going to be about a, a, a minor character from book one. And in my opinion, it pays off. It pays off really, really well. So I'm going to get into that now. So guys, if you have not read uh, The Desert Spear, pause, come back after you read. Or if you just don't care, <laughs> I don't know why you'd be even watching this. But if you are, hey, uh, you've been warned. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to break this down into uh, to characters. I find that that's the best way to do these reviews. I, I said in the previous video that uh, I I'm doing kind of a new format where I'm going to kind of start to shorten these reviews a little bit because I felt like they were getting a little overly long and I was starting to neglect actually doing them because of the time that it took to do a lot of them. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm just going to do like I did with Lightbringer. I'm going to talk about a character and talk about their arc through that book instead of going beat by beat with the plot. Uh, so let's begin with Amon Jardir because he is very much the main character of this book. I mean, he's on the cover. That should be your first indicator. 
That's our man Jardir. And I say our man Jardir because in the first book, like I said, I thought he was just your typical villain. Oh, brown people bad or something. And, and I see that that's why why Peter V. Brett got a lot of flack for that book, for, for coming off that way. This shows he had a plan, okay? He gives such an in-depth and intrigue. This is about a guy who overcomes all of the fucking odds to become the man, you know, to become the leader of the Crazy people. And it's such believable growth. In just 200 pages, he goes from a slave to being the man. I mean, that's, that's what's, who doesn't want that story in a, in, in a fantasy novel? Who doesn't want that? And I think the fact that it shows, it goes all the way through the years to where it intersects with book one, where he, where, where, where uh, Jardier and Arlen are actually together at the Desert Spear. And when Jardier betrays him, it's like, ah, you bastard, you know? This showing that they were actually friends, they actually developed a long-term friendship, it made his betrayal mean so much more in hindsight that now what just seemed like, ah, oh, yeah, your, your inevitable betrayal, you know, it, now it makes it seem like, man, that was a fucked up decision, man. So uh, it had a great, great payoff. Uh, his... Uh, God, I forget the Aban. Aban was uh, was was Jardier's friend, who uh, he basically befriends and 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 defriends more than once in this book. You know, because it's a warrior culture, and if uh, you aren't down with being a warrior, you're just considered lesser less of a man. So he wants to be like a merchant, things like that. So they have a really a really messed up relationship that kind of goes back and forth. Uh, it deals with multiple wives and stuff like that. And look, guys, if you are easily triggered. And I hate to use that word because I feel like triggered is such a buzz phrase now. But if you're easily triggered by certain types of tropes and events, this is not the book for you. Because the crazy people come off as very misogynistic. Because warrior cultures mostly are. Uh, there is sodomy. There is forced incest. There is rape. There is... Lots and lots and lots of things like that in this to where if you are putting on the 2019 I'm Offended goggles, you're not going to like this book. And I think that might also be a reason for a lot of the negative reviews in, uh, on Goodreads. And I I've said time and time again, guys, yes, if this was a book that's taking place in 2019, yeah, that's probably messed up. But when it's medieval times and a warrior culture... Yeah, it's unrealistic not to have those things. So, again, go into it expecting that, and you'll be fine. Uh, but Jardier, he uh, it, he never he after he gets everything settled, he wants to conquer the, uh, the 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 wetlanders, as they put it. So when he actually starts going through some of these places and taking over some of these towns, and then he meets Leisha. And as we all know, everyone loves Leisha, right? Everyone falls in love with Leisha, and he's no exception. He actually wants to make her like uh, his wetlands version of his wife. Uh, she's clearly not interested in being another wife, uh, but uh, she does do the hokey pokey with him. So uh, that's what I'm going to say. I've got kids, guys. I, I try to I try to find code words, and sometimes they slip out. Like one day at work, I asked my supervisor, "Is okay if I went potty?" So uh, yes, this happens when you have kids, guys. So. <laughs> Some of those news kind of leak out when you do live video. Uh, so yeah, she does. She, she is intimate with him, and and she does seem to be interested in him. But she's not interested in being like his, you know, nineteenth wife. And, and and that makes that makes that makes sense for her growth. But but the fact that he's so smitten by her to the point where he's ready to pick him over her his long term wife uh, it, it, it is quite something to say. But um, let's talk about Leisha here. And I'm gonna be honest up front. Uh, even though I said I don't like those trigger words, uh, another phrase that I find in inevitable at this point is is Mary Sue. And let me tell you something about Mary Sue's guys. Yes, I don't like them, but I don't like Gary Stews either. I don't like perfect characters in books. I like characters that make mistakes, characters that get captured, characters that need saving, characters that don't always make the right choice, characters that aren't always beautiful. I like these things. I like depth to my characters. That's why I like Kip so much in Lightbringer because he's just a dude. You know, I like that. I don't like I don't like Mary Sue's. I don't like Gary Stews. Whatever you term you want to call them, I don't like perfect 
characters. And Leisha is in danger of becoming a perfect character. Why? Well, let's see here. She wards better than Arlen. She does uh, medicine better than Bruna. She's a better diplomat than Rozier. I mean, everything this girl does, she's the best at. Everything. And I still like Leisha. Don't get me wrong. I just think she's in danger of becoming that character. Oh, she's so beautiful. Everybody's in love with her. It's, it's got all... Oh. Go to the Wikipedia page and look up what a Mary Sue is, and I bet you about... Nine out of the ten facts it has on there. That's 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 dangerous territory for me. So uh, I'm hoping that trend don't continue because right now it's like Mary Poppins. She's starting to be practically perfect in every way, and everyone wants to get with her. So uh, I'm hoping that that's what she does in this book. She's practically perfect in every way. Um, with Roger, uh, I said I felt like he got a little bit more character development. Not really. Uh, he's just kind of there. And again, he pines for Leisha most of the book. Uh, he's trying to teach his musical ability to others, and he just can't seem to be able to do it. His music is the only one that seems to be able to repel these. Or not really repel as much as it just like makes the demons timid to where they won't attack them. Uh, it kind of puts them under a spell. Um, you know, the, the, the clans that are coming in from Crazier trying to get him to, to, to have a wife and stuff like that. So they're, they're trying to get in good with these people. But again, as far as like, what Roger does, just like the first book, I like Roger. He just doesn't quite do very much, you know. And I mean, that's fine. He, he's good. He's there for the to break the tension. Sometimes uh, he gets a little bit more uh, closure about the the way that his, that his, that his parents died and things like that, and, and the way that um, gosh, I should write these names down. I really should. The guy who basically raised him, he got some closure about it with his death, things like that. So. He had a little bit of an arc in this book, but as far as like, hey, remember when he did this, this, and this? No, not not a lot in that. Uh, him and Leisha kind of had a come to Jesus meeting, and, and, and you know she made him something out of that doll. For I'm sorry, guys, I should write this shit down. I'm sorry. Let's move on to Rena. Uh, Rena was a character that I thought, like I said, was just kind of be a throwaway character in the first book, but we actually go back to there. She's still there. She still thinks that she's promised to Arlen. Well, I'm going to talk about in a minute. I'm going to forget about Arlen, you guys. And, you know, she's still there. But now she doesn't have uh, her sister there. To, her sister was actually the one uh, who was being molested by their father. And she was surprised it actually hadn't happened to her yet uh, because they had other guests in the house. And then after those guests were leaving, uh, sure enough, she starts getting scared. She used to bar her door at night. And now her dad's like, oh, we ain't got guests anymore. You don't need this bar anymore. So uh, she knows it's inevitable. And, of course, it happens. And it's very disturbing. You know, and uh, she she finds uh, this boy Kobe, I think his name was, and they want to get married, but of course, father ain't having it, uh, just because because he thinks that they're getting it on before they're married or something like that. But we know it's for completely selfish reasons. Uh, you know, he can't handle the farm by himself. He and he wants to do what he does. You know, he's a real despicable character. So that's why when she stabs the shit out of him, I'm actually like fist pumping. You know, after he uh, stabs Kobe in the junk. And, and actually kills him. Uh, so that was one of those where I was like, yes, you deserve to die, you rotten piece of shit. So uh, again, if you're easily offended, that's one thing. But trust me, it's going to have a real a real big payoff to where you'll feel a lot better about it. And you know, a lot of the book deals with her being on trial with the people of Tibbetts Brook and then being too much of cowards to see what actually happened because no one wants to actually step up until Arlen shows up and saves her and... Basically does the, you know, let he who is without sin kind of thing go at them, which kind of furthers his deliverer, deliverer uh, title that, that, that's been going on. Earl in this book, he actually does go back to uh, and, and sees um, Reagan and... This is the last time I do one of these reviews without writing the names down. I'm sorry, guys. I'm reading like four books at once right now, and I'm forgetting characters' names. Uh... But anyway, he sees the people from the first book again, and, and you know he comes to terms with who he is, and that his face is all jacked up. They're okay with it, and things like that. But you know he still says, you know I'm I'm not Arlen anymore, so I'm going to kind of keep moving. He does somewhat bury the hatchet with his dad. He doesn't really. I think he forgives him, but he doesn't let Jeff know that that's that he's Arlen. You know, but 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 Jeff is very remorseful about what happened. Uh, he's got a new family now. And he's much more brave now. And he says, you know, just because, you know, I'm happy in my lot in life right now doesn't mean I don't miss my kid and my wife and things like that. So somewhat of a redemption story for Jeff. I appreciated that. But um, I think that there's always going to be a, a, 
room for redemption for certain characters unless you're like Kylo Ren, you killed Han Solo, and it's like, no, there's no coming back from that, so don't even try it. Um, <laughs> with Jeff, it's like, look, Jeff was a real coward in the first one. Uh, you know, you can sit back and look and say, I don't know that I would have done anything differently. You know, there are people like that, and there are, there are people who will rush... There are people who are firefighters and there are people who are pencil pushers, you know, and Jeff was definitely the, the pencil pusher, whereas Arlen is definitely the firefighter. He's going to rush, you know, headlong into a building that's on fire before Jeff would. So uh, a little bit of a redemption arc there, but you get the whole thing with Arlen and, and Rena kind of getting their shit worked out. You know, she feels like he abandoned her and, and, and they get things worked out. She still wants to get married and he's like, I'm not, I'm not going to get married or anything like that. You know, they end up fighting this mind demon. I think they call him Mimic. And you actually get a POV chapter from Mimic, the, the, the point of view of the demon. That actually surprised me quite a bit because I just thought these were all just going to be just a mindless rabble of orc. You know, I didn't have any idea that these were going to be sentient beings. So that's a nice little wrinkle, and it gives me a new direction uh, for the series going forward. Next one's called The Daylight War, which is actually referenced numerous, numerous times in, in Jardir's backstory. And, um, like I said, you really got to the point where you're like, okay, is Arlen or is Jardir the Deliverer? Because they both seem to fit the mold. And you thought just because Jardir stole the spear from Arlen in the first one, hey, it's not like Arlen made it. You know, he found it in those runes that, that, that Jardir found this crown in. So, there, it really depends on if you're into the prophecy crap or if you're not. If you're not into it, it's like, yeah... You could be like Arlen, be like, there's no such thing as deliver. It's a bunch of hocus pocus. It's a bunch of made up bullshit. Or you can be like Jardir, who straight up believes, yes, I am the deliverer. So uh, I'm interested not only to see what happens when those two hook back up, because they've already said that you know, uh, Jardir's already said, yeah, we meet up again. Or I think it was a, a Bond actually who said they meet again. They have to kill each other. They're going to fight to the death. Uh, I don't think so. I think there's going to be a, a manly handshake of some sort in there, and they're going to realize. Uh, we have a greater enemy, you know. Let's 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 take care of the demons, then we'll worry about our shit. So that's where I think it's going forward to. But guys, I enjoyed the hell out of this book. I do understand the people who could not get past the first 200 pages and felt like it was not the same story that they signed up for. Me, I, I said it felt like if you had lost uh, a segment of Painted Man, like if you put out a special edition of Painted Man and you weaved in jar your story through that growing up like you did with Roger and Leisha and, and Arlen in the first book, then I think people probably would have been able to swallow it a lot easier because it kind of felt like the lost, felt like a novella it really at the beginning of this book. Uh, it kind of filling in between the two books. And I think the fact that he's already got like three novellas for the series, maybe maybe that was actually a plan. He just didn't go with it. But uh, w once it's past that, I feel like it was every bit as good as the first book. doesn't sound like a lot happened, but it's really... It feels weird to have what feels like a setup book in book two, but I think this one was like dealing with a lot of the issues and a, a lot of the problems that propped up in book one. So now we get to actually go full speed ahead with Daylight War uh, headed into Skull Throne and finally the core. Um, I'm not sure when I'll get to finishing this series. Uh, like I said, I had some downtime. I'm, my schedule, I have Stephen King's the Institute coming out on the 10th. I have Joe Abercrombie's A Little Hatred coming out on the 17th, and I will be speed reading the hell out of those. And then right after that, I get back into Lightbringer uh, to get in time for the final Lightbringer book in October, as well as Dr. Sleep in October. So I'm fitting this in, these in whenever I have a chance. Same with the uh, the Broken Empire trilogy. The same with the Star Wars EU books I've been I've been rereading. And, you know, guys, don't worry about the Star Wars EU books. Those are something that are like, those are like 300 pages. You know, those are just, hey, I've got 10 minutes on my hand. I can read 25 pages. And yeah, that's just, that's just whatever. I, I've, I've, I don't know if you can see them. I, I've read about 60 Star Wars EU books and I just, just a reread thing. So it's not like it's anything that I'm, I got like a schedule to do on those or anything. That's just whenever I have downtime. Uh, I just tried going back to Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson. And I'm not going to lie, guys, the middle section of that book is tough. It's a lot like Canto Bite in Star Wars The Last Jedi, where it's like, I'm starting to feel like I could take this out and the book wouldn't change any. I don't know. That might change. If you are if you read Oathbringer two years ago like everybody else did except me, uh, maybe you're laughing at me right now. I don't know. But I do still am planning to finish it before New Year. Uh, that is definitely on the schedule because after, after uh, Book 5 of Lightbringer comes out, my schedule's open until the end of the year when I start back on the Wheel of Time. 
So, uh, guys, I, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate. I'm sorry it took so long to to, to get to some of these reviews. Um, I'm still going to do what the Broken Empire book two and uh, Red Rising books two and three. Uh, something else that I read and I can't remember. I'm, I'm still working on Dragon with, uh, Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. So lots of content still coming. Uh, again, I'm going to get back on it. Was uh, my kids going back to school? My four year old's just starting school, so that's uh, that, that's, that's, that's always a lot of work. Uh, going back to school. I'm back in school. Uh, you know, so things got like a little hectic there last week. Uh, that's why uh, the content's been a little slow. But uh, I think this is two videos today. I'll try to get on those uh, those other reviews this week because I want to get them all out of the way before uh, the Institute and a little hatred come out because that's where all my free time is going to go. So um, if you guys don't mind hitting subscribe, that'd really help me out. Like, comment, all that good stuff. And that would really, really help me out. Uh, my, my goal of 750 subscribers before New Year's is, looks like I might get there before New Year's and that's, that's really, really awesome. So thank you guys. But please uh, uh, talk to me in the comments because I love talking to you guys. And if you haven't read this series and you're watching this video, man, don't do that. Read the series, then watch these videos because this is a really, really underrated series, man. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you soon.